Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's live stream, we're gonna go over lawn sill flooring. So if you're looking for a high-end flooring uh, that's very scuff resistant and used in a lot of commercial applications, then that's what we're gonna go over today. And we're gonna also talk about uh, different types. So I got some sample books over here that we're gonna look at through with a GoPro. And then at the end, we're gonna do some commentary on the recent install that I did on Thomas's van. Uh, from here on out, we're gonna to refer to as Marine One. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's go over here to the computer and uh, check out the web page. So first thing you can do is like, go online, look up Lawn Seal, and you can just right off the bat see kind of what they're about. Well, you're probably most familiar with Lawn Seal flooring is it is gonna be from the aircraft industry. So if you're on a plane um, or in an airport, that coin flooring that you see on the ground, that is lawn sill product uh, most often. They've got all kinds of different applica applications, um, you know, exhibit halls, stuff like that, uh, hospitals, um, also like in specialty vehicles such as ambulances, um, and also known in the marine industry. So a lot of boats, uh, the yachts that you see, that it kind of looks like a teak floor, uh, but it's actually sometimes it's gonna be lawn sill. And this is actually what we're gonna talk about today. So what people have been doing is they've been taking this and putting it into vans. It's a perfect product for a van. Um, you know, it's very scuff resistant. Uh, it's very resilient. It's easy to clean uh, and it, it wears very well. And let's move into uh, some different types. Let's see here what I was gonna show you guys. Yeah, essentially you can Google it, look at a bunch of pictures. Um, but the next thing is to get into uh, different types. So we've already talked about briefly that you know it's really tough, resilient. So let's talk about all the kind of design stuff that you can use, all kind of different um, products that they make. Uh, that's essentially the same thing, just different textures, different colors. So we're on this product page of Lawn Seal. In a minute, I'm gonna show you where I purchased mine from. Uh, not affiliated with this at all, just it's a place that I go because it's really easy to order from. And so that's perfectfit.com. So this is where I get everything. So you can actually see prices. You can kind of price out what you want as far as uh, the floor you end up choosing. Uh, but right here, let's see, yep, there we go. So there's all kinds of different kinds. And in just a second, I'm gonna show you some sample books that I have. So I uh, did a specialty order of um, some sample books right behind me. That way, if I have customers that come in the shop, they can actually see, you know, touch, feel the textures, uh, look at the colors. Um, it's much better than kind of just looking online because this flooring is pretty expensive. So, you know, you really do want to make sure you're getting something that you're going to want for a long time. Uh, so here's a bunch of stuff. Um, I wanted to get to the Lawnwood Marine, and I wanted to get onto this one specifically because this is what we used in Thomas's van. Now, design-wise, um, this is the kind of the look that we were going for. Uh, it was more of a kind of like 80-20 industrial with more kind of like the marine application. And uh, I didn't pull up a picture of it. We might do that in another live stream about his ceiling. Um, the ceiling of his van could be a whole video of itself. Uh, it's a really cool slatted style ceiling with the embedded LED lights. So yeah, we'll definitely do that in a future stream. But let's just choose this one for right now so I can talk to you about it. Uh, which one we chose and then show you the uh, stuff in the book, application, stuff like that. So we chose Lawn, wood, uh, lawn Marine Wood and we went with the Teak and ebony. Um, and this, the wood grain finish on these uh, is incredible. Uh, it, it actually has some depth to it. So these pictures on their website, I mean, they really don't do it justice. Um, hopefully the GoPro can kind of pick up the wood grain of this stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. Now, this might not be your style, but um, Again, there's stuff to, everybody has a different idea of what they want. But this one in particular, 
we really liked because we were essentially going to match his ceiling to the floor, kind of like a mirrored effect, and it actually worked out really well. And then if you go to uh, perfectfit.com, you can go to their marine or their lawn sill flooring, and then this way you can actually go through, find what you want. Um, for example, like the lawn marine wood, you can click on it. See if this will pull up. And then you can start pricing out the size that you need for a van. Um, so this next part, pay attention to it because this is going to decide uh, what orientation you're going to put the floor. Because you're pretty much going to have to only do it in one orientation. So for example, with this uh, piece that we're doing for his van, notice the, the, the long lines. So these long lines uh, coincide with the roll width. So for example, when you get your roll of vinyl, um, Actually, I'm going to jump to something real quick so this will make sense. So if I go here. <laughs> I'm fast forwarding to the end. It's okay. We're doing it live. We can jump around. Uh, let's see. There we go. So if you notice, this piece of lawn sill is, uh, the lines go long ways, which, which makes sense. So what you want to do is, uh, if you have like the wood effect or something like that, just know that the lines are going up and down. They're not going to go left to right on most of these products. And then what I wanted you guys to pay attention to when you get to order it is notice that they sell them in six foot wide rolls. Um, you can get it up to 60 feet. Obviously, you don't need that for a van. But the six feet is important because you're going to have to start making considerations on the, uh, uh, the placement. So if you have a ProMaster versus a Transit uh, versus a Sprinter, um, the amount of extra that you're going to have on the sides so if you intend to cover a gap or you intend to kind of roll it up as like a, a kind of like shoe molding or something like that or like a toe kick type of thing, um, just be aware of that. Uh, I'm pretty precise when I do installs like this, so <laughs> it, it bothers me if this center line is not perfectly center. So for example, I added up all these ribs, divided by two, counted my halfway and found my middle point. So this green piece of tape is my center line of the van. So this is the exact center line of the whole van. So you may put it in and just roll it up against the left side and cut all your excess off on the right side. Um, but I wanted to have this line perfect because uh, I just wanted to do that. Um, I was thinking maybe in the future or once the build got going on, I could use it as my reference, knowing that this is a true center line right here. Um, anyway. So let me go back to, let's go back to here. Okay, so just know that it's six foot wide, doesn't come wider. That's pretty much gonna do it for any van application you, you have. Um, and then the roll length. Uh, so if you wanna use this, if, you have, if you're working with your van and you have the van floor itself and you're just doing the floor, you know, just get about uh, two feet extra. So when I got the material for Thomas's van, this is exactly how much we had left off uh, lengthwise. So it's about, you know, maybe two feet. And so this was pretty much the only scrap from his van. Um, but if you're wanting to, if you say you went with like the black coin grip, um, what are the gray or something like that or they have like a speckled pattern I'll show you that in just a second if you're going with that um, You're probably wanting to also maybe wrap the bottom cabinets like where if you have like mountain bikes or something That's going to scuff it up, you know Storage stuff that you put in the back for the trip um, If you're wanting to actually coat the cabinets with the floor That's a good idea to order extra and then you can just uh, you know measure out the square footage accordingly with that 
So we're going to go from here, and we're going to move into the different sample types. So bear with me right now. We're going to I'm going to turn on this GoPro. Here, I'll put it on my face. So uh, this is that system I was telling you guys about, uh, maybe in the other video. And it is a wireless system to where we can actually, I can share my point of view through the vans. So as I'm building the vans out, you guys can see right here, this is going to be able to show you what's going on. It's really cool. So it's a, if you guys want to nerd out for a second, this is a ultra low latency 1080p transmitter. And that's a fancy way of saying whatever you see on the GoPro uh, essentially shows up in real time. So there's not a, a lag. So if I go to point to something, you know, my voice isn't like 10 seconds afterwards. Um, anyway, so let's go over here. We're going to talk about the different sample types. So over here, on this section, I've got, let me move this up out of the way. So we're going to come back to this piece of uh, insulated board with the, this is a zip system and this right here, we're going to come back to that in just a second. All right, so here are the two binders that you can order. And let's see if I can get this out of the way. I'm going to show you guys the title of these. So the first one we have is the embossed um, binder, and then we have the smooth and wood grain binder. Um, if you really want to, you can contact Perfect Fit and, and order these. Um, I'm not sure what the cost is. Uh, it's been a while since I order these two books, but this is just so if I have customers come in the shop, they can actually touch, you know, feel the different uh, types of textures because um, long so foreign, it is, uh, it's not cheap, but you can um, get one of these binders, you can really go through their, the inventory that they have. So this, this first stuff that I'm showing you, this is the typical coin grip flooring. So this is the stuff that you might see like on airplanes, um, what's actually kind of popular is this speckled color. I'm not sure if that's coming through. Um, but it kind of has like these little white flakes in it. And then we have, we got these, some glossy stuff. I don't, I don't like the glossy stuff. Um, we actually have uh, a diamond plate. So, I mean, you can use this for all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be for van products. <clears throat> and again, this is a texture stuff. Pretty much you're not going to be using this for a van, but, uh, oh, this, actually, this you will. So this is a Lawn Point Moonwalk. And I've seen this in a bunch of van builds on YouTube. So this has a different texture pattern. It's, it's like the coin. It gives you the grip, like the coin. But actually, I think a little bit better. Um, and it looks really cool. And they've got it in some really nice colors, uh, like some really earthy colors. Like this moccasin is really nice. I've actually seen that in, uh, in a van. Um, but probably this out of this whole book is what you might put in a van, other than the black coin flory, like I just said. But let's go over here. This is the smooth and wood green. So these are your higher end finishes. So if you wanted to do. Um, if you're looking for a, a higher end flooring system for your van, this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to have all kinds of different uh, wood grains and patterns. And I, I know it's not going to show up on this GoPro, but there's actual texture built into this uh, floor. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, then you're going to have some stuff that's almost like a linen type of uh, embossing on top of it. Uh, that one is called, let's see here. So we got Lawn Strand. And anytime you see Top Sill, let's see if it's coming in. Yeah, Top Sill. Anytime you see that, that is like an extra protective coating that they put on it to be a little bit more abrasive resistant. I mean, it already is pretty awesome, but uh, that's even better. 
and you guys can look at these on the website. I'm just I'm just showing you because I want to show you the uh, the thicker. There's like a thicker foam one that actually has some cushioning to it. <clears throat> look at this. They got some really wild uh, flooring, and I think uh, if you guys follow Seven O Savage, he's a YouTuber that's doing a, a zombie apocalypse build. These uh, one of these is what he used on his. Uh, his build. I'm pretty sure it's one of these. Okay, what that sounds, that means that my GoPro ran out of battery. So uh, that happens. <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance to show you guys this, uh, the, the one that has the, uh, the thicker foam. But this one is actually twice as thick. So it's kind of uh, like spongy. So if you, if you wanted something that was, had some give to it, uh, this is the, uh, what is the name of this called? Lawnwood Performa. That's what these are. And so they're, they're almost maybe three sixteenths, not, not really a quarter of an inch. Um, and then this stuff right here is just more, you know, plain, shiny, which you're, you're probably not going to want in a van. You want some texture. And uh, just, just remember, as you're building your van, you probably want something with texture because you want some grip. Um, you want a color that's going to, you know, mask some dirt and stuff like that. Because if you're going out in the, the wilderness, you know, you're bringing sand and dirt and stuff like that. Um, like a, a white lawn sill flooring is not probably going to be what you want to go with. Uh, something that hides the dirt. Um, something that's grippy. So that is what I would recommend to you guys. Um, let's see, I wanted to show you this thing over here. I'm going to leave you guys on this Lawnwood floor page really quick. I'm going to replace that battery. Because I definitely want to show you guys the, uh, that zip system sheathing as well as kind of the lawn seal, just like a real life example. Let's see if I can get this GoPro back up. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. So when we get to going over here and doing the van builds, you guys can already see how awesome this is going to be. Just kind of first portion uh, point of view of, you know, working on the van. All right, so let's go over here and check out this. Um, so there's a the company that makes this. Uh, for some reason, I was not on the top of my head. But anyway, they, auto, uh, they automatically cut this system out so that you can do... Um, it's the flooring system that we used. Uh, AVC rig, that's where we got this from. AVC rig, and they have it for Transit, uh, Sprinter, and I think Promaster. And essentially what they've done is they've taken a zip system sheathing, uh, and this is actually made in four by eight sheets of plywood. And so what they've, the value that they've added to this four by eight zip system is they've, uh, created a CNC path to cut this out uh, specifically for a van size. That way you don't have to do it. They even, for example, give you the little hole to uh, lower the spare tire. Um, but with this system, uh, I'm just going to briefly show you how I applied this, and then we'll go into that commentary video. But imagine this is your floor, so you get your insulated floor, and then you got your, your material. The next thing that you're going to want to get, and you guys are going to wonder why this box is leaking. Uh, for some reason, this must have been broke, damaged when I purchased it, and I just pulled it out of the corner because I'm not ready to use it yet. I'm going to have to order another one, obviously. But, yeah, it must have gotten dropped in the shop. Um, anyway, so you guys get to see that. But this is, uh, this is the epoxy system for the floor. So this is how you adhere the lawn sill floor to whatever uh, your, your 
applying it to. Could be wood, could be, um, in this case of the zip system, this is a, a waterproof coating uh, that they put on the top of it. That's what the green stuff is. So it's two parts, and what you're gonna do is once you have the floor clean, prepped, cleaning is really all you have to do. The second thing is get your, um, you're gonna want to take this right here. You wanna lay it out in your van um, and make sure you don't need any major cuts, which you're not gonna need it because it's already six foot wide. There's really nothing you can do about the width, so the length can just trail out the back of the van, no problem. So this is the, the most difficult part. The reason that this is so hard, the epoxy, even if you're experienced, is uh, it has to do with the open time and the working time. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that. If you can't see that, uh, I'll explain what this is. So we got in the instructions, you have open time and working time. That is the time that you have to work with this. Uh, the open time is the time you have to mix it. And then the working time is the time you have to apply it. And the reason you need to have all your ducks in a row, everything clean and prepped and ready to go, is once you take the part B and put it into part A, you have 15 minutes to work with it and get it mixed. Uh, once that's up, you only have 15 minutes to get it troweled out and put on your van. And it's, you need a specific trowel. So this trowel right here, see how fine the teeth are on it? Uh, this is a a specific depth for this to work correctly. You don't want to have it too thick because uh, it's going to get all, uh, the, the epoxy is going to start to cure and if you don't have everything evenly put down you're going to have lumps um, because as the epoxy starts to harden it, it, it's harder and harder to move so you really need to work quickly using this. So. Let's take uh, what we've learned so far about what lawn sale is, how we're going to apply it with this epoxy stuff, what we're applying it to, and the, the bottom piece. And let's go over here. Uh, let me turn this off. And we're going to go through and go through the video of me actually installing it. Um, let's see, turn this thing off. All right, come on, GoPro. All right, let's just get over here into videos. Da, da, da. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start disassembling the van. So that's pretty straightforward. You know, we're going to take the foot plate out. We're going to do all that stuff. Um, so what's nice about this system from ABC Rig is they're going to, they actually give you a, a threshold piece to use so that you can, uh, you know, clean it up and make it look professional. It's going to come with like a, a steel lip. <clears throat> that lip's going to be powder coated. All that good stuff. And so you can actually see that uh, piece right there in the bottom. So that piece comes out and then that uh, nice piece comes back in. So right there on the floor, if you guys can see that, that's the uh, formed metal piece that is uh, powder coated. And then in the next clip, we're going to just move on. We've got all that cleaned out over here on the right side, and we're going to start working on <clears throat> where the parking brake is. This parking brake is, the, the housing has to be moved. So you'll start to see that there's things that need to be moved in the van to begin this install. And this is the uh, the ABC rig flooring piece is cut out. It's made into three sections, so it's really easy to put in. However, um, there's a little caveat 
uh, that I want to tell you guys about as far as putting it in the van. Uh, there's a set of instructions with uh, certain adhesive that is uh, recommended to use, but depending on how you're installing it, whether you're three people or you're just one person, um, that's really going to dictate how you're going to be able to install it. Uh, for me, I'm one man doing this in this van, and one thing you're going to have to make sure of is over here on the top, so I'm marking up this top here, the seams. You want to have the seams as close together as possible, so that warrants you being able to move these pieces. Uh, ABC Rig recommends that you use a product, it's called uh, 3M90. So uh, let, me, let me just get a can of that. So there's, there's two products. They make a, uh, like a, uh, they have a, a liquid spray version that's like a, an upholstery spray that comes in like a one gallon can. So I purchased that for my next install. Uh, but this is what is recommended if you're kind of a DIYer and don't have that. The, the, the problem that I had was, um, you'll see here in a second, uh, uh, Thomas has a wheelchair lift, and that lift has a special bracket uh, that we do not want to move because everything is, uh, the, everything is orientated very true, and moving that bracket just opens a can of worms about all, all kinds of stuff. So you want that bracket you need to have is like, almost like a datum point, like a point that it's, it's referenced off of. So if you can imagine, um, uh, da, 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 da. that bracket's over here in the corner. We'll see it in just a second. Um, <clears throat> that's actually something really good to bring up is you need to make sure that anything that you can foresee being uh, a hindrance to installing, you got to get that finished. Uh, uh, you got to get that worked out before you put this in. So. Uh, let's just keep playing this. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out everywhere that this is going to impact uh, the van, and something's going to make sure that it, make it out of whack or something like that. So for example, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, that bracket is just barely touching it. But uh, like I say in a couple of my videos, everything in a van affects everything. So wherever this sheet is placed, the next sheet is referenced off of that, and then the next sheet is referenced off of that. So you can't simply just move it forward and say, okay, this will be fine, I'm gonna go from there. You really gotta think about the end result. And that's pretty much anything you do in a van build is however the end is gonna be, it's, it's very hard to backtrack and fix something after you've done so much in a van. Um, so this next section, what I'm doing is uh, I'm taking a square and I'm going through and I'm mapping out where the bracket is to the uh, and translating it to the top piece because I need that top piece to just I need everything to settle down nice and easy because remember we're gonna put down adhesive now this is not lawn seal um, this is everything happening before we do the lawn seal so this is floor prep um, so we're talking about lawn seal, but in the, in the middle, we got to talk about what it's going to go down on, and that's this floor. So right here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm just cutting out that uh, piece of where the bracket is. Oh, and another, another thing that was kind of a trick up our sleeve was we also had to, there was this power supply for the wheelchair lift, and at the time, we didn't have a time to, because uh, we only had it in the shop for two days. So we couldn't reroute this, we couldn't take it apart and redo it the way we wanted to. I had to leave it, but then I had to drill a hole out right here so that once the floor went down, we could still get the core back up. So lots and lots of stuff. So take your time when you do this um, and kind of just step by step, get everything you know, organize as much as you can, because things are going to come up. So we got the first part done. Now I'm just cutting a section 
out of the other side, because this is probably like a quarter inch gap. And so finally we got it to where it's going to sit nice and flush. And you'll see me move this just a, about a million times, but it's got to be very precise. So we only have one location where the cord can come up through, and one location where that bracket is. So now I'm just pretty much just continue to do do all that. Let's see where I got. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pause it there. So this is what we were trying to achieve. Now, just keep in mind the whole time we're doing this, look at this board. So one thing you do when you're when you're building, um, if you're building your van outside in like your driveway, for example. The, the weather's going to mess with you a little bit because you're going to have the expansion and contraction of wood. You're going to have different humidities if you're working outside versus inside a shop. In a perfect world, inside a shop like this, with air conditioning is perfect. It's really not for your comfort. It's more for uh, the materials that you're using because that expanding and contracting, contraction can start to warp boards. And so if we go back into the video, if you guys can see, um, the boards that Thomas has, you can see how they got like a little bit of a curve on this back side, and this piece right here is, this one's the straighter piece, and then this one's more curved. And it's just the nature of, you know, buying something that's, even though it's engineered wood, you know, engineered wood isn't perfect. Um, so, this is going to affect our, our seam, so we want to make sure that we keep an eye on that when we go to actually glue it down. Okay, so now we're moving on to the back. We got the first section done, we got the second section done. And then what I'm doing right here is uh, he has the ramp in the back. Um, I can't wait for this series to come out of this van. It's so cool. So back here in the back is where uh, Thomas loads his paragolfer. So look up a paragolfer. It is an awesome piece of machine. Uh, he uses it to golf, shooting sports, all that stuff. And it's the whole reason behind this, this van build. Everything was designed around it. So that's the ramp that it loads. Uh, the paragolfer into the van. What I'm doing now is I'm measuring um, because I, I can only cut one time. It's got to be perfect. And that is the last section, so that gap. Now, visually, you are seeing, you're going to see this gap at the back. So it needs to be as clean as possible. There, there's no redo here. Uh, this, this flooring system is very expensive. So measure 30 times cut once on this job. So now that I got the angle that I wanted, I mean the, the location where I wanted my cut to be, you guys can actually see this bottom piece is, uh, that's the piece right over here. So that's the scrap piece from it. So we got, we're, we're cutting this out. Um, and then what I'm doing right now is I'm just prepping uh, everything and just really, really double checking. Again, I'm gonna pause the video. You can kind of see how there's a little bit of difference here and here. See, you can see, see how there's, you can see the white of the board. Then over here, there's no white of the board. That's obviously because I'm putting my weight on it, but that'll be um, important in just a minute. So this all has to do with lawn sill, I promise, because it's the floor. The reason I'm harping on this levelness and evenness is because uh, once you put the lawn sill flooring in, those uh, gaps, thankfully lawn sill is pretty thick. So those gaps in the floor, even though if they're butted up perfectly or they're off just a little bit, it, that material will kind of ease over that transition. You're going to have some transition lines and bumps depending on your van, 
depending on uh, humidity, how you glued it in, all the above. Um, so I'm going to show you some tricks that I did to mitigate that transition to make it as least noticeable as possible. Mm, let me go back to it. Okay. So we got our piece in here and uh, we're, I'm cutting the rubber just to make sure this thing is laid down as flat as possible. So once I did that, everything is looking good. Next, uh, evenness. Making sure that, um, okay, here is a perfect example. You guys can see how these boards are kind of are warped. So this first one, now we're going to fix all this, but I just I wanted to bring this to your attention because if you are if you're new at doing this DI whatever, it's okay that this stuff may not stick out. You may be re really excited that you got the whole flooring system in. You know, it came in, uh, it was undamaged, <laughs> and you're just ready to to put it in. But so things like this you might overlook. So that's why I like doing videos like this so I can I can really point out these details, really harp on them so that you guys you can see something that you might not have seen when you were where you were installing it because it does ultimately affect the very end product of your pan. The flooring system is really important uh, to have a really just like laser focus on because everything's going to go on top of the floor. So if it was kind of off and then you go to add the whole entire system uh, whether it's your your bed or cabinets or whatever, and then a little section of the floor is off, you know, it might be kind of like an eyesore. So this is something that you can help you guys out. These little tiny things, you know, uh, they make a difference. Uh, I'm saying this because I know how the, the end result came out. So you can see how that board's a little warped. Um, so it's kind of curving down. So... That's actually not that much, uh, well, the, well, the board, yeah, it was warped a little bit. But also, underneath here, Ford actually doesn't have that much support. So where this IP is, this line, there's not these ribs. There's only like one, two ribs, uh, corrugations in the van to support that. So I think that was also playing into it. This one is nice, flat, and straight, okay? And then we got this one back here. So you can kind of see me. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to. I'm wonder. I'm confused. Okay. So this will be how you are if you <laughs> do this for the first time. I'm confused at why it's not laying flat because um, there. So there's actually these little bumps and stuff that Ford has underneath the van. And I, what I was doing is I kept thinking that something was under here that I wasn't seeing, and it was keeping it from not going level as I wanted it to wanted it to be. But I checked and I checked and I checked, and I didn't find anything. It just had, it was actually that the, the boards had a little bit of a, a warp to them. So it took me a while to figure that out because um, first time I've installed this type of floor. And so I kept looking, looking, looking. I was like, man, what is, what is keeping this kind of cockeyed here? You know, I put the bar. Anyway, the point is I went through this whole thing trying to figure it out. So the next thing is I figured it out and I said, you know what, we're just going to put um, extra silicone on these uh, corrugations and then we're going to kind of uh, move it in a way that uh, would make it, um, see if I can explain this to you. So you have the corrugations in the van. So imagine you got these ribs, okay? And so I'm using silicone to adhere this floor. And the silicone is so that when I put the board down, I still have a couple of minutes to where I can move it. I kind of move it in and out to get that seam really tight. Um, it's not the 3M90 or that adhesive that ABC Rig uh, has for their assembly. It's the same way that I adhered my floor on the van behind me. And so... It works great. Silicone is an excellent adhesive. Um, but I wanted to use the silicone because since that board was warped a little bit, with the silicone I could actually move it into place and get it where I want it. And then as soon as it was locked in there, 
as soon as it cured, it was, it was, it was perfect. So that ended up working excellent. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just scuffing up the floor uh, to get some good adhesion, uh, not going down to metal or anything like that. Uh, just a little light Burlo pad, and then what I'm doing now is just using some uh, isopropyl alcohol, maybe using denatured alcohol. I'm not sure what I was using. Uh, oh, yeah. So you see right here? See how there's no corrugation? I don't know if that shows up in the video. Can I zoom in? No, I can't zoom in. So right here, you guys can see there's no, if you can see, there's no corrugation. And then this right here, there's, there's a corrugation missing. So this side doesn't really have the support like it does over here. So here is the uh, silicone install. So I went through and uh, so these sections right here are what are going to uh, touch the bottom of the corrugation and the white pieces are the top of the corrugation. So I wanted to make sure, so just make sure that you hit all of those. And uh, one thing that I found out was this, well, at least on the one that we had, this white section hovers on top of the corrugations. It doesn't actually physically touch. These bottom parts do. So that might be an area of improvement for this, this product. Um, but anyway, so I laid it down, and then I went ahead and put, um, I used to do DJ entertainment, so I got all my flight cases, my turntables, and snow chains, and water bottles, and sandbags, <laughs> anything of weight. And then what that was doing is two things. One is, you know, obviously holding it in place, but it's, it's I needed a ton of weight so that, uh, that bend, I was trying to get that bend out a little bit. So I come in with the next piece, do the same thing, uh, clean, uh, iceberg alcohol, silicone, da 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 And then I've got this in. Now we were hoping, there's a string right here, we were hoping that this string uh, we would be able to use to do some, uh, it's a channel that they put in the van. So if I zoom back, Notice how there's like this channel right here where there's no, uh, it's like where the section of the van was by Ford was joined. That's a cable, that's a cable tunnel. You see that where that string is? So you can run cables, uh, electrical cables there. Um, now that string is so in the future we could pull a cable through. Well, our layout did not allow that in the future, so. But if you're wondering what that string is for, that's what that was for. So again, more of my DJ equipment, speaker, speaker, speakers, more speakers. All right, I got that all in, even the subwoofers. And then now I'm on my last section, so I blew it all out, cleaned it. Um, here, you guys can see, I don't know if you can zoom in this video maybe later, but see how the middle things don't touch, it's just the bottom. So that's why I only silicone this bottom section. I'm not sure why they, they did that. Um, maybe it's designed on purpose. So if you're wondering why I didn't do the silicone there, it's because essentially it would, it would not touch. Um, this bottom part is the only part touching. Okay, moving down. All right, more silicone. And then this one was pretty much my files, <laughs> brake rotors, <laughs> ammo boxes. Um, yep, that's pretty much all I had. So we allowed that to sit on there uh, overnight. So it, it, would, it recommends 24 hours. So 24 hours. And here, so here's a little hack that you guys can uh, steal from me. So you see this uh, piece of. Uh, it's not a two by four, it's thinner than that. What is that, a one by three or something like that? Um, so I, I did that here and on the back side, and that way when I put the weight on it, 
the seam is going to be equal, dis equal I mean, it's going to be level on both sides. So that way, when it dries, it should be perfectly level. Um, so I took everything. So you can see that? Look at that. Perfectly, that joint is seamless. It's a seamless. It worked out very, very well. Um, oh, yeah. So I didn't tell you about the ABC rig uh, recommended adhesion. So that Super 90, the downside, remember I told you the, the silicone, I was able to move it after I placed it? With this contact adhesive, you need at least two or three friends because you need to lay it down perfect the first time because this is an instant adhesion. Once you spray this on this, uh, on the product, on the board, and you spray it on the floor, and you let it off gas for just a second. Um, once you put the floor down, you, if you messed up, it's there. It's there for life. If you had to move it, you would rip off all the foam and destroy it, and you'd have to order a whole new kit. So that is why I was, I was kind of against this method. Because I wanted to make sure that once I put the flooring down, I was able to move it. Just, I mean, just a little bit. But if you use contact adhesive, it's when you lay it down, it's permanently there. You, you are not pulling it back up. So if you got it cockeyed or you moved it too much forward or too much backwards, that's where, that's where it's going to be. So um, the silicone is not, nothing that was recommended, but I've used it in the past. I've used it on my personal van. It's worked great. It's not, not come loose or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to give you that point since I kept telling you guys that, that the silicone was so great. All right, we're moving in. We are cleaning everything out of the van. And I promise you guys we're getting back to the lawn sill, the point of this live stream. There it is, see? It's, we got it in the video. So what I skipped over, um, I guess I didn't have the footage of me doing this, and it was, uh, it's footage of me cutting out the contours. So you want to get some basic contours cut out because it's not going to allow you to easily install this. So if you imagine if I did not cut out the wheel well and this flap over here on the side, it, it was going to, uh, why is that audio playing? Hold on. Um, if I didn't do that, it would compromise this middle part. It wouldn't lay down flat. Uh, so cut it out, pre-cut this out as much as you possibly can. So everything you can do, because you can move it around. You know, you're, it's not down yet. So move it around, play around with it, all that good stuff. Get it where you want it to be. Um, and because you, you only get... <laughs> Remember, you only get 15 minutes to work with it. If you can mix it a little bit faster, maybe you get 20 minutes. So when I installed this, um, it was pretty stressful because the, the epoxy, cure, I mean, it's, it's curing once you put that part B into part A and start mixing it, it that the, cure time, the clock is ticking. So what I did is I set a clock for 30 minute alarm and then I had another. I had my phone set up on a 15-minute alarm. I'm sorry, on a uh, a seven-minute alarm. So essentially, what I did was I started one alarm at 30. That means, you know, danger. And then the other phone was going to go off to let me know that I needed to move from the left side to the right side. So I split it in half. So I took 15 minutes. I did seven minutes on one side, seven on the other. You know, obviously that's not 15, but Seven minutes on one side, the alarm went off, and I was like, oh, man, if I'm here, I need to start making my way over here to the right side, or I'm going to run out of time. Um, and you will run out of time when you're doing this. I mean, it feels like watery when you're put, putting it uh, down at the beginning, but as soon as it starts to cure, it starts to get more gluey and more gluey, and uh, it can be stressful. So hopefully watching this video is going to kind of help you guys prepare for uh, that. Uh, let's fast forward here a little bit. So I've got this out. Okay. 
Why do I not have a video of the, the floor being laid out? Huh. Oh, well. Um, so essentially what I did was I, uh, oh, yeah, 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 that's a very important thing. So you see how I have it folded in half right now? I actually screwed, screwed in in two places where it would not be seen. So this back's going to be covered, but down here at the bottom, right here at the bottom, I have a screw drilled in for the center point, and then I have a screw drilled in for the center point right here. And by drilling a screw here and here, it locks in the, uh, the, uh, the lawn sill flooring, and that way I'm just worried about the flap on the right and the left. I don't have to worry about it, the whole thing twisting on me. Uh, so it locked it in place, and that way I can just put my adhesive on one side, trowel it out, fold it over, and then go to the other side, do the adhesive, trowel it out, and then fold it over. And it doesn't move, so I put a screw in the top, and I put a screw in the bottom. And it's, again, it's where it's not going to be seen. There's going to be a little metal lip covering it, covering the hole that I drilled through the, the product, or the lawn seal. So I got everything ready to go. Um, I've already mixed everything into uh, a bucket. Now you can just put it in their bucket, but for some reason I put it in a transport another bucket anyway. Okay, notice I have a respirator. Make sure you have a respirator. Make sure you have gloves on. Um, make sure that you have. Uh, make sure that you have. You're wearing clothes. I don't. Know, I wore this for the video. I don't know why, but the pants that I had were destroyed because when I moved to the other side, I slipped and my whole, my whole leg got epoxy all over it. So those pants are gone. But. Because remember, once you start putting it down, you can't stop. You can't go run and get gloves. You can't go run and get a respirator if you thought you needed it uh, or change your shoes because uh, I mean, you have seven minutes per side, and that's it. So once you start, you want to have enough time so that you're not um, you know, having a heart attack as you're <laughs> running out of time. Uh, even if that means uh, doing a mock layout like I'm not lying put the lawn seal down get your trial in your hand and just act like you're putting the stuff down and time yourself and then act like you're putting it down and time yourself um, so what I did is uh, I did a lot of practice and I was ready to go so now I can actually enjoy the process I can start from the top I can get my uh, um, you know, kind of get in the groove. Uh, and the most important thing that you have to remember is this trowel, th this thickness, it's very, it's very thin. But you really got to make sure that this, you, you lay out this thickness on the floor. Don't cheat and like have some globs up because um, eventually you're going to have to roll the floor out and imagine if you just didn't take your time and you got a bunch of globs, it's going to start to turn into a big wave of a glob instead of just like little ones that the roller can actually move out. So, da, 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 da. so here we are. We're going. We're making our move. Coming down, coming down. Um, I think I'm checking my phone right here. Oh yeah, if you guys are wondering what this is, this, this cutout, uh, I relocated the AC unit from the back to the front because uh, we didn't have any room in the back where the water tank was. So this was, that's another video. That was a pretty amazing thing that, that I'd, I had in my head how it was going to happen, but in the real world it was pretty interesting because uh, you actually have to find a company to refabricate AC lines. All right, I digress. All right, we got our tra everything's troweled out. Here we go, here we go. We're going. We're going. All right, so we got our first side done. Notice it's very, very even, all good. And then we're going to take this and we're going to slowly roll it. And we're rolling it like we're putting on a vinyl graphic or, you know, 
rolling out some dough or whatever. We're making sure we don't have any bubbles. So take, I know you don't have time, but take your time. All right. And then there you go. There's one side. So, um, where did I, so I guess, okay. So there's that. Oh yeah, <laughs> make sure. So right here, I haven't messed my, my, my pants up yet. So don't accidentally get your knees in the bottom of this and then uh, get it on your pants and then <laughs> get it on top of your lawn sill. If you get that epoxy on anything, it's ruined. You're, you're not gonna clean it off. Um, you can maybe try to do some mineral spirits or something like that, but it, whatever you contacted will never be the same. All right, moving. Now we are ready for side two. So notice how, how well those two little screws that I put in there, they just keep it nice, taut, um, and just ready to go. So here's where I messed up. I think I, my knee kept, see, my knee is touching the epoxy over here. I think that's where I messed up. Anyway, okay. So if you notice on the front, see this first side? I didn't do that thing where I poured the bucket out, okay? And then you see me on this side, watch this. I'm going, I'm going, and I'm like, oh crap. I just poured the whole bucket out. Uh, now there's a reason I did that, okay? Uh, so I researched a lot about epoxy um, when I did the this, this shop floor. So I did, I epoxy the shop floor. You know, did a bunch of research and epoxy has something called a pot life. And the pot life is, uh, it, it's how fast it's curing while it's in its pot, you know, where, where you mixed it. If you can quickly take that whole thing and pour it out, the temperature goes down. So uh, I think, uh, I could be wrong, but I think it's an endothermic reaction where the uh, epoxy is it's it's creating it's getting hot. So if you can slow down its curing time by uh, getting it cool again, you can save yourself a couple minutes. So what was happening in this uh, part of the video is it was starting to feel like glue. It was hard to trowel, and I was like, man, uh oh. <laughs> so I immediately just poured the whole bucket out. And what that does is that allows that epoxy um, to cool and not harden so quickly, uh, or at least that's the theory. So now I'm working my way, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm trucking it. I am trucking it. Like right here, my alarm was going off. So it's already been 15 minutes. So this stuff is, from any, any work I do forward is past uh, the the time that you can actually work, it's working time. It's already passed, I already ran out of time. And it's really hard right here to, uh, to trowel out. It's very gluey, very thick. Um, and so I'm like, man, I gotta get this down because you gotta get it down where it's not all the way cured because guess what, boom, you gotta get your, uh, your little detail work. So this whole thing is curing this whole time. So this little detail work over here, I mean, it's just, you want to get that roller on there as soon as, as soon as you can. So this little detail work around this uh, wheelchair lift, man, I had to do it perfectly and then I had to do it quickly. And those two things that usually don't go together. So I did good. I was happy with what I did and I was like, come on, come on. And then boom, finally, I got the roller out. Um, so if you guys can see, 17 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. So this, this is real time. I mean, this is, I'm already two, two and a half minutes past the working time. So I really had to get in here and just start rolling this floor down. Boom, 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 boom. And you want to roll it, make sure you get all, every, get that epoxy very even, good contact. And... Is that my last video? I guess it is. All right, I'll try to, I'll try to explain what I did here. Okay, so final thoughts on this, come on. Final thoughts are, this is a pretty good video on 
on how to install this. Um, and I think the only thing I left out was probably this roller part. I didn't it can mention it in the beginning, but you will need a, I think it's a 75 or 100 pound roller to roll this out. I think this one was 75. Um, I don't think they made a 100 pound for my rental company was. Anyway, this is the last process of the lawn sill insulation. Installation. So you're going to roll this out, and what you're doing is, again, you're trying to work out any air, possible air bubble, bubbles. Uh, I did a pretty good job. Um, I, there was no, no air bubbles that I could see. Everything. This actually was a flawless install, as stressful as it was, because it's just the timing, because you don't want this to cure. Um, because not only is it the lawn sill you're messing up and having to redo, but you can potentially mess up the floor and then you're gonna have to redo that. So um, that's why I really wanna take, really take your time on this. So again, final step, roll that out from the middle to the sides, from the front to the back. And then you wanna let it set for a little bit and then come back over, um, I think about an hour later, um, don't quote me on that. There's, there's two rolling periods. There's the initial rolling period, and then there's a follow-up rolling, rolling period. Uh, so once you do that, you're done. It, it needs to um, obviously not have foot traffic for 24 hours. And then uh, I'm just going to read the last part of the instructions. Allow no foot traffic period for 24 hours after installation. installation and allow 72 hours for the adhesive to fully cure before setting heavy furnishings or allowing heavy traffic. So we were only able to allow this to sit for uh, 24 hours uh, because Thomas needed to head on to where he was going. Um, and the good news was, you know, the shop was at about you know, 72 degrees the whole entire time, the humidity was good, so you know, it couldn't have been more of a better uh, environment to allow for curing time, so it felt good for that. So this took two days, and those two days, I'd say you can almost call it maybe two and a half days, maybe if you're doing DIY, because you can't get around the time that it takes for uh, the adhesive as like the silicone to cure, and you can't get around not being able to walk on it to let the uh, epoxy cure. Now, some uh, people that do DIY vans, you'll see them. If, if you guys are doing it outside, you know, you need to, if it's too cold at night, like below 70 degrees or whatever, you're going to need to put like a heater somewhere in the van and just kind of keep it warm. And you're really going to have to baby this because you get one chance for that epoxy to cure. If it doesn't cure properly, it's going to be gummy or it's going to be brittle rock hard so you need to make sure that you've got it really good uh, you, you try to manage the conditions because um, once you're done that's it but the good news about everything is that this floor is it's incredible um, Thomas has already been back to the shop we've been you know, kind of some tweaking some things as he's shaking the van down there's been sand in this van there's been gravel there's been you know Going back and down with the, uh, uh, you know, the tires and stuff like that, and it's doing great. Um, it's a really, really good product. So this lawn sill in combination with the ABC rig flooring, uh, it's a really great option. Um, they're premium materials to be used in a van build. So if this is kind of what you're going for, um, look wise and kind of, uh, you know, on the high end of a van flooring system. I think this is perfect for you. All right, and uh, let me step, I'm gonna step really quick on the other computer just to see if I can access the chats. All right, so I don't see anything coming through. So let's go ahead and close out this live stream. So again, 
let's go to the computer. So lawn sill, if you guys are looking to uh, get this, just type it in. Um, it's spelled weird. It's spelled weird, L-O-N-S-E-A-L. So type that in. You can see all that good stuff. And if you want something, an easy way to kind of go through and actually get a price, um, again, no affiliation, but perfectfit.com is a just a easy place to go. It's got um, it's got upfront pricing. You know, you can do how many feet. Uh, there's not that big of a discount for ordering more than 60, but you can at least see all this stuff. Um, and then conveniently at the very bottom, they have the trowel you can buy. Uh, just buy this trowel. Don't worry that it costs $22. Just get it. Uh, it's very important that, that um, the depth that you, you spread it out, because um, it also has to do with the curing time and everything. Uh, this right here is what I bought. I'm going to have to buy it again. Um, that was a little expensive mistake if I dropped it or it was in shipping. I don't know, it's been too long to figure out who did it. So I will have to buy another $123 bucket of that. Um, but you'll just need the product, you'll need the floor, you'll need the trowel, and this. You don't need the tape and you don't need this vertical surface stuff. Um, I'm not sure about the tape. Apparently, you can buy this tape and use it in place of the lawn sill epoxy. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all you need. Floor, trowel, this. Um, so they make it nice and easy, just boom, boom, boom. Uh, now this is linear foot, so when you order this, like I'm just going to make an example. Uh, the minimum you can do apparently on their side is three. So this is three feet by six feet. That's what the linear foot means. So imagine you have a six foot wide roll and the linear feet is this, this direction. So the default is six feet wide and you can start at three feet and then just, just add. I think I got 12 or 14 feet. I can't remember how much I ordered. Um, yeah, so this is how, that's what you need to buy it. Um, in the future, I will have that long format, uh, real-time video so you guys can watch it. Or you can just uh, re-watch this live stream. Okay, so that's that. Um, lawn sill. And uh, yeah, we're going to close this thing out. Guys, if you have any question on how to install either the ABC rig flooring or just any flooring in general, put that in the comments below. Happy to answer that for you. Same thing with the lawn sill. Um, if you want my recommendation on stuff, like maybe th some things that I've seen, maybe trending a little bit. I know the coin flooring, that's kind of like the basic, everybody kind of gets that, it's like the black coin. Uh, but like a lot of the wood tones and stuff like that are, are pretty nice. Um, my recommendation is to go go with some more like like earth tones, stuff like that. Stuff like I said earlier that's going to hide dirt well, um, and then actually consider maybe getting something that has a little more grip and texture to it. If you're doing stuff that is more like off road, maybe in the dirt, the mud, or the snow even. Um, yeah, but that's going to do it for the lawn sill insulation installation video, and. Uh, Hope to see you guys in the next live stream next week. Um, come with some questions and we can answer them live. Uh, maybe do a little bit of a Q&A at the end of the video. But until next time, uh, I will see you guys next week.